Ahem. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Ahem. Uh-huh. Fancy Hi. meeting you here. Yeah, fancy meeting you here. Yes, indeed. Uh, do you come here often? Uh, not as often as I should. <laughs> 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 Uh, hello everyone, welcome to Australian Transformers Weekly. We are bringing you Transformers news from around the world, across Australia, in a world where HasLab's Victory Saber crowdfund is now a reality, and there's a bunch of characters that are on golden discs. Uh, this is episode 247 as we close in on the big 250. We are recording live on Friday night, October the 1st, 2021. This episode, we will be talking about more beasts coming to Kingdom. A lot more beasts, as it turns out. Star Saber finally has some colour in him, and uh, there's a bunch of things that have been happening with uh, Amazon orders being uh, being cancelled and uh, changed around, which we'll, we'll talk about briefly during the show. All that and more is coming up after this. Hello and welcome. I am Jason. I'm your regular host. Joining me this week, we have Max coming to us from all the way over in the lockdown free city, I think, right? Of Adelaide? Uh, for now. Are you free? <laughs> Where well, we are it? for now. We're like what, what's it like? Skirting T- tell by me. continually. T- tell, tell me what freedom yeah. is like, Max. Um, sort of, I don't know. It's, <laughs> from what I understand, it's basically the same as you guys, right? No, 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 no. We're, I'm, I'm in Sydney. There's, we're, we're in lockdown until October the 11th. So ten days from now, apparently we we get to leave the house and we'll be like uh, we'll be like those people who um, come up from underground, you know, after 300 years of living underground in nuclear winter, and they um they come up and they're, and they're like, oh goodness, you know, what does the what does the world look like? Uh, uh, that's anyway. Uh, anyway, New South Wales also has a new premier today, but that's do you that's, know uh, who that is? Uh, I'm not sure, but um, no, I'm no, not sure I don't that think anyone knows. I'm not sure that it matters. Um, I there's a, there's enough New South Wales premiers going around that um, we can put them on a shelf like a collection, and thus we come back to collecting toys. Uh, what so what what has what has happened this week? Has, has anything anything notable happened this week in your life, Max? I feel like I owe it to have done something mm. notable. Yeah. Um, given I'm not in lockdown, but I haven't. So there we go. Well, I, just as soon as you said that, I saw two viewers drop off, so I hope you're happy. Um, I'm, I'm not. I'm <laughs> unfulfilled perpetually. Fair enough. How about too. yourself, Jason? Um, my, so my, my week has been filled with um, golden discs. So a, a new golden disc has appeared in the news every day this week, and it's been driving people a little bit crazy because some of them can be ordered and some of them cannot. Uh, we will be talking about that coming up in, in the show. Um, not, um, not, not a great deal otherwise has been happening in my, um, in my world, I will tell you. So how about let's just cut straight to the, let's cut straight to the chase and let's start talking about some news, shall we? Yes, please. We're going to move swiftly on and get to the news. Straight into news. Hasbro news. That will take us into some news. What news comes from by yonder? First of all, we are going to talk about some new releases that have come out this week overseas. We're going to start with overseas releases. So, uh, Kingdoms... Kingdom's so-called Wave 4 release has started with Waspinator and Shadow Panther both being released uh, overseas in the last last week or two. Um, these figures have made it out at retail overseas. They haven't quite made it to Australia yet, but you would hope that they're imminent given some of the other releases that we've had turn up recently here. Um, they, are the, they are the only... Two new deluxe class figures that we've got on the uh, on the schedule for for Wave Four of Kingdom so far. Pipes and Slammer apparently have been moved to Wave Five. So um, if you are looking for these guys, I would suggest that they're probably going to start popping up on. Uh, I think one of them's popped up on Amazon soon, re- at, um, at already ready for order, uh, and the other one should not be too far behind. 
Uh, we are also we've also seen overseas the uh, release of the uh, the very speedy release actually of the Universal Monsters uh, Transformers collaborative mashup Draculus, um, who I have to say has gone from gone in in my mind from uh, a figure that I kind of don't care about to a figure I'm actually really looking forward to. Um, it's, it's something to do with presenta- It's something to do with presentation there. Right? It's, a, it's, it's the cape. Like- it's the cave. Yeah, it's the cave. It's the box as well. It's all, all this artwork they've yeah. done for it. It's like, like know, they, they, it, they've it really, like they've really, gone they've home. really polished that turd. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, like they've really, <laughs> they've really put a lot of effort into this. Um, so yeah, so yeah, uh, the 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 collaborative uh, repaint of uh, mind mind wipe into Draculus has uh, has started to hit retail around the world. Um, and he should be he should be winging his way to Australia soon. Um, another thing that is winging his way to Australia soon, and in fact is already here, depending on how lucky you are, is uh, Shattered Glass Goldbug, as seen here, photo provided by a by a friendly TCCA member who uh, was lucky enough to release uh, lucky enough to receive his uh, receive his Shattered Glass Goldbug in the uh, in the mail already from Amazon. Um, this is actually the first time Amazon's actually gotten these figures out early. They've they've been lagging quite behind, quite a lot behind, um, and I must admit, I do have a slight uh, slight pang of jealousy uh, at the fact that there's a there are gold bugs and shattered glass figures out in the world that uh, I don't have yet. But it's okay, mine's coming. What else came out this week overseas? Um, there is also a uh, Gen, the Gen Select Toy Galvatron, which I think I think we talked about last time you were on the show, actually, Max. Or well, maybe I think we did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, maybe, it's maybe, had a reasonably quick turnaround. Probably not. Probably not actually the last time you were on. I think I think it was it was that clearer photos came out, or it was I think it was released in Hong Kong about a month ago. And so yeah, so he's he's taken his time to make his way to market, but here here he is. So, uh, Toy Color Galvatron is also out in Asia now and uh, winging his way out to collectors' shelves. And that's about that's about it for things that have come out this week uh, overseas. In Australia, um, I don't actually have I don't actually have visual aids for these ones. As I mentioned, we do have uh, we do have Shattered Glass Goldbug uh, is actually um, is actually uh, out. And we have heard sightings of Studio Series 86 Rekgar and Studio Series 86 Sweep, which is the Scourge repaint. We've heard that those have been found at Kmart. Now, that is kind of burying the lead somewhat because the other things that have been found in Kmart this week, if you are lucky enough to live in one of the northern states anyway, is some of the most anticipated releases of the year, or one of the most anticipated releases of the year, and one repaint that people hope not to be stuck with, the Netflix series Sparkless Seeker. And in fact, I've got... I'll make a lot of noise on my desk. I do have one here on my desk, if you can see my five pixel uh, preview on the, uh, on the thing there. Um, he is uh, he has been seen at Kmart, finally, at long last. We we did hear from Hasbro that it was, it was due for release in June, and then it sort of slipped to July, and then people had... People had spotted tags on shelves that said that uh, the Battlefield Voyagers were coming in August. Then it turned out that the Battlefield Voyagers that came in August was actually a very welcome reissue of Soundwave and Optimus Prime, which um, no one really saw coming. Then the Wave 1 Battlefield Voyagers came back in for some reason. And now this week, suddenly, Kmart's very apologetically just gone, we know this is the one that you really wanted. And here it is very very quietly sending it out onto the shelf. So it has sent TCCA members in Queensland into a bit of a tizzy, uh, going out to hit up all the Kmart stores and trying to collect uh, sparkless seekers for other members who are after them. And that is, uh, that I'm, I'm very happy about that. I've, I've mentioned it before. I'm, I'm very happy that we are the kind of, we are we are the kind of community where people will actually go out and find find figures that other people want and uh, and, and bring them in. Now, um, just to go to one of the one of the uh, viewer comments, uh, Rob Franklin said, "Wasn't Wingfinger also a part of this wave?" So, yes, uh, actually, no. Sorry. So, we, uh, Rob's talking about the um, Rob's talking about the kingdom uh, the kingdom releases. Wingfinger is actually wave three. What's ended up happening with wave four is that we're not getting. We don't seem to be getting an actual wave assortment box. We've just got Waspinator and Shadow Panther. There is also word that 
if there is a wave assortment box, uh, which some retailers might have access to, there will be reissues of tracks and um, the first was the first fossilizer Ractonite or one of the others. It was um, the T Rex Velociraptor looking thing, whatever it was called. Yeah, one of, yeah, one of those. Uh, yeah, so there's tracks and a fossilizer in the wave assortment box. So. Um, retailers have been given the option of actually purchasing full cases of the new molds, which is which is great because uh, it makes it really easy for it really makes it really easy and really common for those figures to be um, uh, to be found on store shelves and makes it really easy for people to order them as well. So yes, there is a, there's a wave assortment box. Uh, Wing fingers in the previous wave, um, but apparently. Um, Apparently, retailers don't need to take the wave assortment box. We also have yet to see the Voyager from uh, Wave 4 rear his ugly head. Ugly head? No, he's actually kind of pretty. We will see some photos of him later on, and we'll talk about him. That's, uh, that's Tigertron. So, without, uh, without uh, further ado, let's get, it. let's get into the news of the week, shall we? Which, um, is, that's the wrong slide to go to. The news of the week, Hasbro remembered that it still had a, um, a, a lineup of four Kingdom packs ready to ready to go. Oh, also, sorry, I'll take that comment off the screen there. Hasbro remembered this week that the Golden Disc collection was a thing that exists, and there's a bunch of figures that have been leaked and uh, very very well regarded by, uh, by the community as they've been leaking out that um, we've been wondering where they were going to turn up. Um, there's been a, there's been enough figures that if they're not going to do wave four and wave a, a wave five of kingdom seems somewhat questionable if we are actually at October now and, and wave four has only been partially released so the question sort of has been hanging around where are these figures going to go and um, the answer this week came out in a a collection called the golden disc collection uh, which is a set of four four sets of, it's a, it's a collection of four sets of figures that you can purchase and uh, they are they appear to be Amazon exclusive at the moment most uh, it seems that the rule with 2021 is that exclusive products go to their exclusive retailers but a small quantity of them also go to Hasbro Pulse so people have been seeing these sets pop up on Pulse but they also disappear pretty quickly from Pulse because they only have a limited number on there. Now, Max, have you have you got? I think I think I think when we spoke about these last, I think you do have a, a Kingdom Huffer. Is that right? Uh, I did order it, but I don't know what happened to it. It was off eBay. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I should probably follow it up. Um, yeah, maybe that can be your homework for the week. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so Huffer, Huffer was very well regarded in, I think he was in wave two uh, of Kingdom. Very fun, very fun figure to, to play with. And uh, a lot of people are very happy to have him in, his, in their collections. Hasbro also seems to be very happy with Huffer because they've sent him back to the remold, remold, retool and repaint uh, font a few times now. Pipes is due for release. Pipes was meant to be in wave four. Pipes being a, a retool and a repaint of Huffer. And, uh, we're not quite sure when that figure is going to be released. My money is next month. However, the further repaints of those two into Road Ranger, as you see on the left, and Puffer, which you'll see, which you see on the right, is uh, is a thing that is now happening in the Golden Disc collection. Now, the Golden Disc collection obviously makes uh, makes reference to the Golden Disc from uh, Beast from Beast Wars and from the Netflix War for Cybertron Kingdom uh, show, which was a fairly major MacGuffin uh, for the show and a bit of a bit of a plot point. Hasbro has decided to bestow extra powers on the uh, the Golden Disc in the toy line. It now has the power to create alternate universes. So sure, <laughs> in, yeah. I mean, like, why not? You know, why why not? So in the same in the same year that Hasbro's embraced alternate universes by giving us a mainline Shattered Glass franchise. They've also decided that multiverses are now a thing, and so they're giving us... They're, they're using this as a, a plot device to give us variants of different characters, which, you know, I, 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 I am happy to give Hasbro points for trying. It's, 
you know, in years gone by, they would just shove these things out there with a label on them that says, this is Puffer, this is Road Ranger, enjoy, go for, go for it. We'll um, but now that they're, ourselves. Yeah, 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 we'll, we'll figure out a story ourselves. Uh, maybe this is maybe this is a sign of you know what happens when people are working from home and they've got a little bit too much time and start coming up with parallel universes and things like that. So the golden discs, uh, because it reveals possible destinies for characters, it also allows us to see into parallel universes and alternate dim- dimensions. Um, in this particular universe, um, the uh, it's picked up a it's picked up a GoBot, which um, is Road Ranger, the character on the left. Now, this is actually one of the first times that uh, that Hasbro has actually referred to GoBots officially in their uh, their their press releases as well. Uh, the GoBots, uh, the GoBot Road Ranger, is referenced in the um, the description for this for this set, just as a uh, GoBot Road Ranger. It doesn't say what he is, whether he's an Autobot or a Decepticon. He certainly appears to be an Autobot based on this photo, and um, then uh, poor. Poor pipes and Huffer. Like pipes hasn't even been, pipes hasn't even been released yet. But apparently the um the transition over to the alternate universe has smushed pipes and Huffer together to make Puffer. That is Road Road Ranger comes through intact. Oh yeah, it kind of is kind of is (laughs) body horror. Like it is, it is body horror. But at least it's not as bad as the the Marvel uh the Marvel Megatron and Ratchet body horror, right? Now, and I'm, I'm, that has I say some artistic this. value to it. This is just weird. Well, I so like as far like as far it. as far as artistic value goes, I mean, hang on, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring this up because like I I, I can't not. I mean, as far as body horror goes, Marvel has you beat. Like they they merged they merged Megatron and Ratchet together in um for several several when well, I say several issues like quite a while. In the Generation One comic, <laughs> so, and they also had the they also had the balls to put and call this the Ultimate Autobot Decepticon team up oh on the cover God. of the comic, as you can see. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as uh, like as as far as body horror goes, like um, pipes and Huffer being being smushed together into Puffer is uh, pretty light. I think the um, so Puffer is a reference to um, one of the sort of alternate forms of uh, of one of the G- various G1 minibots that was only released in I th- I think it was it was either Mexico or, or Spain uh, one of the one of the small markets uh, around the world where they would manufacture their own versions of the minibots so we've been wondering what would happen with this name for a really long time because um, we we've seen we saw Puffer in uh, in leaks a while ago and so here we are, here we go he's he's a he's Kind of an amalgam of, of pipes and huffer, but he's more um, he's more there. Um, the, one of our one of our YouTube commenters says he's the Mexican repaint of pipes. So there we go. And uh, another commenter says Brazil. <laughs> it's you know what? It's somewhere. It's somewhere. Somewhere it's, down. It's, it's a somewhere down era. South America. Yeah, it's a. You know, he's the South. He's the South American version of pipes. Let's just go. It was with a that. different time. Yeah. So uh, so anyway. The Golden Disc has powers, and it has brought us a two-pack repaint of one of the best regarded, uh, one of the best regarded figures of of this year. So, I'm totally in for this. I I, I had a lot of fun, with, a lot of fun with Huffer, and um, I'm I'm totally there for the the Road Ranger and the Puffer repaint. I'm also in for Pipes when he comes out as well. He's kind of this year's seeker. Yeah, you know, just just. Throw another coat of paint on it and release it again. Um, now you, so you haven't actually, you haven't actually handled Huffer. So all of the, okay. all of the talk about how cool that mold is and how much fun it is, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of lost on you, isn't it? Maybe I should try to do something about that. You should. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> um, to be perfectly honest, the ship may have sailed in terms of getting, a, getting a hold of a Huffer now. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, this is a discussion for another time, but. Um, Kingdom and Earthrise specifically, or actually all of Warper Cybertron really, seem to have risen in aftermarket value quite That's significantly, a, like to, to a greater extent than even Combiner Wars. It's um, it's I mean, it's true, but also the like I think the figures are better regarded than uh, Combiner Wars. It's okay. It's safe. You're safe. You can get him for uh, you can get him for um about 
about thirty eight dollars shipped off Amazon. There we go. This is what happens. But this is this is why I have an extra window that's open live so that I I can check this <laughs> on the podcast. Um, so yeah. Anyway, look if you want to get a hold of a huffer, you can, and you. Cannot if you're in Australia like us, you cannot get a hold of uh, pipes and huffer. Oh, someone, someone, um, there you go. Someone, someone, someone's actually said there's a handful of huffers at the local Big W if you need it. So there you go. You can find that. You, you can find that person in the uh, in the Facebook group later on, and you can uh, hit them up. Hit them up for a huffer. Um, speak to Facebook user. I think um, I think I might actually make that a, an official segment on the show. We'll call it hit, hit me up for a huffer. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know what that would be, but yes, it sounds, it sounds vaguely illegal, actually. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so as far as this goes, we've been told that these golden disc figures should become available in uh, in Australia from Amazon. However, the um, however the Amazon uh, the Amazon listings for these guys, um, which if you recall, they leaked out earlier in the year. They were the first 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 revelation of these sets. They're gone. Um, if you were lucky enough to actually order these guys earlier in the year, your order has turned into um, these guys with the official product imagery. But um, yeah, you, you can't go to Amazon Australia and order them anymore. You can, however, order them from Amazon US and they will ship it to Australia. That's not the case with all of these sets and we will talk about that in a minute. Anyway, that was um, that was Tuesday morning that... Uh, um, it seems like it seems like su- such a long time ago. Puffer and Road Ranger uh, were revealed on Tuesday morning. Then on Wednesday morning, a slight panic ensued when Jackpot was revealed. Uh, and um, Jackpot it, Jackpot comes with a Battle Master. So Jackpot is a repaint of the Studio Series eighty six Jazz mold uh, with uh, with a new head design as well. And he comes with the comes with a Battle Master and a Blast effect as well. Just justifying a little bit of a price increase. So he's he is about um, he is about uh, ten US dollars more than a standard deluxe, which is kind of what you expect for the price of a battle master. And um, jackpot is very unique. So a lot of us are very used to going to Amazon US and ordering these figures for release in Australia. However, jackpot is. Um, Jackpot seems to have a new condition on Amazon where they will not ship. So, so first of all, this, this happens quite a bit. Amazon won't ship this figure to Australia. That's fine. We have freight forwarders. So we log into Amazon US. We change our, change our shipping address to the freight forwarder. Oh, it still won't ship to the freight forwarder. And when you look up the uh, when you look up the new error message that's now displayed, it actually says yes. Um, if an item is restricted from export, we will not ship it to a freight forwarder. That's a first. I've not seen Amazon do that before. Fortunately, it seems Amazon does not quite know about all of the freight forwarders that exist because I did find one that works, um, and uh, I believe I believe Jackpot is still available for order. And this does actually lead to some confusion. So Rob, Rob's commented on the screen on the stream saying he sold out on Amazon US very quickly. I'm pretty sure he's not sold out. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna open up my orders page on Amazon US. And I'm gonna jump over to I'm gonna jump over to the listing for Jackpot. And yeah, I can I can definitely I can definitely confirm. Like I'm gonna bring this tab over here. I can definitely confirm he is still available for order if you have your uh, location set to the correct freight forwarder in the USA. So this is this is a this is a bit weird. Um, we've never we've never actually we've never actually had transformers that Amazon didn't like shipping to the point that they would protect them from being shipped to a freight forwarder. Um, we've often we've often had um, We've often had transformers that Amazon doesn't want to ship direct to Australia. It is kind of weird that this condition is applied to set number two of four, but um, you know, there's, uh, uh, it's, it's not it's not the only set in the series that has it. And well, let's take take a bit of a look at um, take a little bit of, bit of a look at how uh, how Jackpot's uh, Jazz repaint works. Um, they're 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 quite they're quite striking colors. They're also the 
also the colors that I'm familiar with um, Ricochet for using as well. But I believe there's some, I believe there is some distinction between Jackpot and Ricochet in terms of repaints that I'm not actually familiar with. But uh, is, a, is, a, is a black and yellow, is a black and yellow not Porsche something that you might be uh, looking to add into your collection I'm, next? Like, I, I don't know what's going on here. Um, just in terms of the <laughs> aesthetics of it. It, it just isn't working for me in anywhere near as well the same way that Jazz did. Like, this mould, for I, me, I strikes a yeah. very good Jazz. And ordinarily, Jackpot out of Jazz figures looks just about as good. But this is something about it that I cannot put my finger on. And I, I, I don't know what it is. It's just... I, I, I'm going to have a go. I'm going to have a go. Portions just don't work with these colours. I I don't know what's going on there. I'm going to have a go. It's the yellow legs. In fact, in fact, I kind of feel like it's the yellow colour. It's the yellow, it's the yellow plastic and the, um, and just the yellow, uh, the yellow plastic, the yellow, where, where the yellow legs are on the the tops of the arms. It just, I don't know. It's, I also feel bright and chalky. Yeah, a little bit. I, I feel like I feel like everything's a little bit exposed because the the the, the car doors are not so um, not so prominent on this jazz mold as well. So it just sort of feels like something's missing from him in robot mode. Yeah, it's kind of like I don't know. It, it looks like a dude wearing minimal clothing. Hmm. You know, like, he kind of just looks like a guy. A dude wearing minimal clothing. That is actually. That might be the um. That's if, we, cool if we did of... if we did titles for the show, we might use that. <laughs> it's a dude wearing minimal gloves. You, you know, like, I it's hard to put my finger on what exactly is going on here. That no, I, I, I get I get what you mean, and like I've I've resigned myself to the fact that I'm probably going to buy it. Um, but um, <laughs> I respect like, that. I, I like I I I do think that the car mode looks better than the uh, the robot mode. Like the car mode holds together quite nicely as a a black Porsche. Um. I'm kind of. Think, I'm actually more fond of the Battlemaster. <laughs> I, I don't think it might be the ratio of black to yellow. Mm-hmm. Like just look, but comparing the car mode to the robot mode. I maybe, think it's uh, just Rob. Rob has a theory, which is that it's the Simpsons yellow. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe that's maybe very that's it. Shade. Yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. It is a it is a very specific shade of yellow, isn't it? Um. I don't. I, I. I don't. I still don't mind the car mode. I think the car I think mode that looks, looks really fine. classy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The, so this is this is the thing, right? The, this the jazz mold is actually a little bit divisive because people are really happy that there's a jazz, but then they get the Studio Series eighty six jazz and they pick it up and they're like, oh, is that it? Oh, okay. Mm. And I feel like um, I feel like without the without the wow factor of being a jazz toy, this kind of lacks the um, this lacks the, the positive, and everyone sort of looks like yeah, okay, yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess like so. I said, I'm res- I'm kind of resigned to the fact that I'm probably going to have this in my collection anyway, so I may as well enjoy it, right? So like, cool. Uh, the head sculpt is really good. Like like it's it's a it is a very detailed new head sculpt that they've done for the figure, so that that's cool as well. I'll definitely give it that much. Yeah. Let's let's move on to chapter three of the Golden Disc collection. So we've had we've had two G one inspired characters. It's kind of time to give the beasts a go, right? Because this is this is Kingdom, and it is it is a nice split between G one and and beasts, isn't it? So chapter three is Tigertron. But he's not the Tigertron that we have uh, we're expecting to see uh, come to market. He is an orange. He's an orange version with a mutant head. He's a mutated Tigertron. Where in in this reality, the uh, I believe they call it the Quantum Surge as, that's brought about by the Golden Disc. Uh, the Quantum Surge mutated Tigertron, and um, so he's got a he's got a different color and a different head design. Um, I actually, I actually think this looks really quite nice. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of detail on in the paint on on this mold. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm I do think I do think he's quite nice. Um, we haven't actually seen the Voyager Tigertron come to market yet, so it's a little bit of a um, 
It's a, has it's Tiger a, it's Tron a little, not little come out? No, Tiger Tron is not out yet. Jesus. What? Cheetor, so Cheetor is out. I just assumed it would have been out. Yeah, bloody hell. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is actually one of our first more detailed looks at Tiger Tron um, but in, in alternate colors. Um, but, yeah, I like... I'm just, I'm just really quite impressed at the amount of um, the amount of work that's gone into the tiger head, um, the mutant, the mutant head as well has quite a lot of detail on it, and yeah, the the paint job, and I think the colours work, the colours are pretty bright. Like there's there's a lot of orange on this toy, but I think the colours work better on this than they do on Jackpot. Yeah, I, I think for me the thing of the colours here that's really standing out is, it's, I don't, it's kind of it's a colour like. It's a color scheme we haven't really seen before. Like, I know it's nothing particularly unique, but it's just, you know, little things like, I don't know if we've seen this shade of blue and this shade of orange together before. Mm, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, kind of just. That's true. The little tiny differences like that make it stand out. Mm hmm. You know, I also yeah, don't yeah, know yeah. if we've seen this sort of deco for a beast mode before. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that uh, pretty sure that this would have been done before, um, and because most of these most of these uh, sets are references to the things that have come before. But um, so, so we'll take a look at him in in his uh, in beast mode there as well, uh, which does. I mean, I mean, look like most of the kingdom beast modes, the and and in fact the masterpiece beast as well. There's sort of a kind of a jigsaw of parts that hold together, but. Still quite impressive the the detail that's on him, the stripes and uh, the articulation on the the limbs as well. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, um, Tigertron. So if you if you if you're if you if you've looked at this and you're sold and you want to get yourself a Tigertron, you can order Tigertron from Amazon US. So set number one, um, Road Ranger and Puffer, you can order from Amazon US. Jackpot, you can't. Unless you have the right freight forwarder, Tigertron, you can. They're happy to ship it to Australia. So who know, who knows why Jackpot won't be exported to Australia? We don't know. Someone's uh, someone is, uh, I believe, um, making inquiries with Amazon as to why this why why the listing is set up this way. So it might change. We'll see how we go. So that's chapter three in the Golden Disc Saga, and this morning. Uh, this morning, as I as I woke up, I was greeted with Chapter Four in the Golden Disc Saga. Who is Pterosaur? Pterosaur is a red and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say white, but it's more kind of a light lightish red um, repaint of Air Razor with some heavy remolding to uh, to turn into a, a pterodactyl design instead of a, a instead of a bird. Really impressive. I really like the amount of detail in um, in the chest design with all the the sort of the scaly finish. Uh, very impressive. Very impressive job changing the wings around. Uh, and basically, the wings are a, a completely different mold, but still the same configuration yeah. as Air Razor. And uh, where is he on my desk here? So I, I what don't gets me actually. Is how on. little? Like it's still the same mold, but it's. I don't know. There are remolds and there are remolds, and this one is really doing a great job of just changing the overall aesthetic. It's true, yes. Uh, like, so I've got, I've, I've got, I've got the the Skywarp repaint of Air Razor here, which, by comparison, the Skywarp. So the Skywarp changes. Uh, hang on, I'm, I'm actually going to um, put myself up in solo layout for a minute. So, uh, so the the Skywarp, uh, the Skywarp deco of Air Razor. By com in comparison to Pterosaur, it's actually a, a very a very slight change, um, but the colours are great. The head sculpt is uh, the head sculpt is new, and you know um, it's 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 it is a really great it's a really great it's a really fun mold, and I expect that to come along into Pterosaur as well. The face sculpt on Pterosaur is also just also just something something that gets me. It's quite impressive. Um, it's it's just really nicely done. Hasbro's really got a thing for there. face sculpts. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of personality in there, isn't there? There's just that slight smile and a grin as well. And uh, Pterosaur does have different weapons again. Um, so Skywarp, in a nod to the the G1 figure, has the uh, the sort of the the wrist mounted um, the uh, well, the the forearm mounted cannons. Pterosaur actually looks like there's. Um, it looks like there's actually some fins in those five mil ports, so Pterosaur gets a gun instead. 
So yeah, very, very, very happy. And look, there's Terrasaur holding the holding the golden disc. I'm not sure how Terrasaur is holding the golden disc. It looks kind of magic, but that's hold, holding this... it. Is. Uh, the other thing is, I just opened them back up. I don't think they come with an actual golden disc accessory. Oh, I don't think I don't think this one does either. I think I, I think um, I think Terrasaur actually is just holding the golden disc that comes with the arc. It says in, it says in the description includes figure, golden disc accessory, oh, right. and instructions. So, oh okay. For well, so, whatever so, reason so, wh- they've packaged it with Terrasaur. So wherever you're, uh, whatever you're lacking in uh, accessories, you get a golden disc. So there you go. So yeah. Terrasaur comes with a gun, by the looks of it, and a gun and the disc. So yeah, it is like it does strike me as kind of strange that they've chosen to make Terrasaur part of this exclusive line here. Like, I don't know. I, I would have thought this would be a character that released as part of a main line, but it, 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 it is interesting. Is, there's been a lot of interest in this figure ever since the name was leaked. Like, um, people have people have been looking for more information on Terrasaur for a while. There was a there was a point, uh, I think, yesterday. So, uh, you know, uh, people can see patterns in things, right? So, um, they said earlier on, early in the in the week, that um, you know the the Golden Disc collection is a set of uh, a collection of four sets. So. They revealed three, and then the rumor was very heavily that Pterosaur is going to be the fourth. And people were saying, you know, it's very heavily remolded. It might be taller. It might transform differently. Doesn't look like it's doesn't look like it's majorly changed in that regard. But it is it is significantly retooled into a different a different looking beast mode. But that was enough to just create a lot of buzz, and people are just like, I want Pterosaur. I don't care what it looks like. Just just you know, l- l- I, you know, I, ne- I need to get Pterosaur. So yeah, there's 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 definitely been a lot of um, a lot of interest. Pterosaur, unfortunately, like Jackpot, cannot be ordered from Amazon US. It's protected from export. Again, we don't know why, but if you've got the right freight forwarder, you can still um, you can still do it. And uh, so that's that's been that's been the big news for figure reveals for the week. We thought we thought that that was it. Uh, for, for reveals for the week, and then Takara just sort of um, Takara just sort of jumped out today and tweeted this image. It was uh, and then deleted this image. If I yeah, correctly. yeah. So it was a, it was it was a, it was a drive by shooting on Twitter, right? Let's be <laughs> let's be clear. Um, Takara tweeted this image and then deleted it. So they announced a a new series called MPG, uh, which. If I if I close the image, um, the uh, so the the Twitter translation of the original tweet said introducing a new series in Transformers. Its name is MPG. More information will be lifted. Okay, soon. Um, looking forward to it. And looking at looking at what looking at what we've got here. So we've got MP. We all know what MP stands for in in Transformers. But and then we've got so we've got MPG. So what's the G going to be? So we've under this in Japanese uh, in, in Japanese. So we have we have Gatai Giant and Giant. But the Japanese words under Giant and Giant are different. Um, from people ha- people looking at this and translating some of the text, um, the the second Giant is used as a category, and the Gatai is a combiner. So it does appear that Takara is going to. Takara is going to create a new line for masterpiece combiners. Oh dear! Um, and, and the um, the so the the thinking is that the MPG actually um, stands for masterpiece gestalt, uh, which is one of the one of the one of the sort of technical terms of referencing a combiner in uh, in the Japanese version of Transformers. So so MPG would possibly seem to be the the line that. Um, the the Raiden project is going to be uh, going to be, be appearing in, and I do actually need to then pull up another image which leaked onto TFW two thousand and five, uh, which I will just do this now because I think I forgot to put it in earlier, uh, which um, appears to show one of the um, one of the the I, say, I keep saying Raiden it's, I know it's Raiden um, one of the train. Combiners, which uh, we we did see, we we did see this guy leaked um, a few a few weeks ago. These are definitely not the photos that we saw from that leak. These are quite different. So what we're what we appear to be seeing here is um, one of the first one of the first train bots with 
that MPG logo um, set into set into the image. Now, whether or not this is actually um, whether or not this is actually an, an official image or a fan made image, we will probably find out in the next few days. It uh, it does seem that um, it does seem that this this looks like it could be. Uh, some of the text at the top so we can see a reference to MPG in there. There's also a one which could just mean that this is the first release in the MPG line. Which does also then beg the question, are they going to be releasing these characters one at a time? And so, you see, if that's the case, your first Masterpiece Combiner will not combine for a long time. Well, we've known about this Raiden project for a good couple of years now as well. So we have, but I think it's, I think it's fair to say... a very long wait. I think it's fair to say it's reaching fever fever pitch now that sort of yeah they're getting ready to reveal the brand and everything for it. Yeah, I mean this we, is a very finished looking figure. It's true. It, it, it's true. It is. I do think it's I do think it's worth remembering that um, these are probably there's been a lot of question over the scale of Raiden as to um, sort of versus versus a masterpiece figure, and. I believe the the explanation that Takara gave earlier in the year is that the the scale of these figures is probably more likely to be like a Combiner Wars combiner, which means they probably are not going to scale with your regular release Masterpiece line. So thus pulling them out of the regular Masterpiece line and making them a separate line, MPG, makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, I also I also wonder if there might if there might be a bit of um, might be a bit of slack from uh, sort of the lack of MPM movie releases going around in uh, in Japan so that team is not necessarily busy so anyway it looks to me like MPG could well be the home of home of Raiden and uh, potentially any other masterpiece combiners that Takara might want to do down the line and um, I actually think that I actually think if the bots are not as complicated as regular masterpieces which I, I think is a, a good chance of that I think maybe they might see a more regular release schedule as well I mean, dare I say, maybe they'll release one bot a month. At least, at least then you, you, know, you can buy it. At least then you can buy it. It's done in six months, right? Yeah. It's because at the end of the day, even with it being official and cheaper than a third-party masterpiece, it's still a modern masterpiece. So yeah. if you want to build a full combiner, that's a lot of money. <laughs> so if, you do, if, yes. if they're going to... If they're gonna, scale back the engineering a bit and make it more affordable i'm not about to complain potentially like, well, look uh, look i think i think given that takara so takara tweeted this and they deleted it within about 10 minutes of it going out this morning fortunately the 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 internet remembers and caches everything very heavily which is why we were able to obtain the um still obtain the text of the tweet translate it and still get the image in the, in the tweet even a couple of hours later so I, like, I, I think very clearly we do have a new a, a new a new MP designated uh, product uh, coming at us. It might still be a while away. Um, bearing in mind that Takara also has the premium finish collection that's going to start coming out this month. I think that goes for I think that goes for six months, either five or six months. So maybe this will sort of take up that release slot after that time. Yeah, sort of. All speculation at this stage, I guess, but... Oh, we, if there's the, one thing the, we like to do, it's speculate, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to... I, I get too... I get mired in it way too easily. The, yeah. It's, I'm kind of just... I'm looking at this admittedly quite blurry image of this figure, and I'm I'm feeling positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling positive, too. I wish I'd thrown this through Google Translate before putting it up, <laughs> but, I, but I didn't. <laughs> Um, I do think I do think that we're looking at some um, promotion at the top that says, you know, this is the first MPG image. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And there is also a very prominent six in the uh, in the text below. So we will have to see. We'll have to see what that uh, what that says. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll have more information on this in the next episode. We'll see how we go. Yeah. We we have to imagine that the you know, a full reveal is coming sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I wonder if this morning if Takara just accidentally they, they got the wrong date, maybe it was the wrong week, it was meant to go out next Friday, who knows? We'll see. Some other some other big news that happened this week as well. Like it, it's it's it hasn't been a it hasn't been a huge week in you know, like um as in the, you know, too many things happening, but there's just been it's been a big number of announcements. 
Haslab's Victory Saber has had a big week. Uh, it's now officially fully funded. Well, I say fully funded. It's reached 11,000 backers, which means it is going into production. If you put your name down for a, a Victory Saber, you are going to get a Victory Saber. The question now is what are you going to get with it? The the first, I think the first stretch goal um, is the, the gun, as you, as you see on this uh, on the figure here, which is at 14,000, you get the V-Lock cannon. The next goal, I think, is 19,000. You get a, a, a um, very nice looking blue, trans slightly transparent stand. Um, and uh, the third stretch goal is yet to be announced, but is thought to be a shield. Now, this image is also very significant in one other aspect because it's the first time that we've actually seen um it's actually the first time that we've seen uh this seen this figure properly in color it's been it was revealed as a gray it was revealed as a gray render they didn't color the render for some reason uh and there were color renders released a, a week or two ago uh and this this looks looks like it's actually the real the real deal the real um the real figure and so we can see him in we can see him in color for the first time and see how those colors uh, reflect under the light and uh, how various various parts of the figure should be colored. It is of course still uh, an early um, it is still an early uh, proposal for for that. There, there is a there's a footnote at the bottom of the bottom of the image that says prototype model shown final product may vary. We are very familiar with that from Unicron. So Max, are you are you into Victory Saber? I kind of wish I had an attachment to Star Saber in any form, because I I, I quite like. You can the fact you can develop is, one now. Well, it's, there's no character here. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, there's maybe no, there's no character that you're familiar with in the yet. next week. I don't know. It, it's just and then like yeah, I have no attachment to Star Saber, and it's kind of a shame because this is a very good looking figure. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest I'm, I'm, I'm that, uh, that maybe maybe for the next week your homework homework might be to watch Victory and then see whether or not you want to jump on this before the <laughs> before the crowdfunding campaign runs out. Because uh, if you if you don't and it comes out and then you decide you want you want it, you know what happened to Unicron. Yeah, uh, I've like I've I've been feeling out regret with Unicron so much, but the uh, Haslab Sentinel recently mm. like shot way up in price like, you know a $300 figure going for over a grand now and I'm <laughs> a little bit worried that I might want this Star Saber down the track and then when it comes to the point which when I do all of a sudden it's three times the price look look, I would I would say it's not as big an investment as either of them and I would suggest you just just go and throw down a deposit and if you change your mind over the next year you can always get your deposit back from EB yeah <laughs> uh, it's it's something I'm considering got a week left I'm... yeah it's got, Tossing a, got it a week left I, th I think it's interesting to see where the numbers go from here uh we did see with Unicron that once it actually once it actually reached its crowdfunding goal, even though it took two attempts to get there, once it reached its crowdfunding goal, a lot of people decided to jump on because they're like, "Well, I know I know it's actually going to get funded now, so I'm, you know, I I will buy in." And so the other the other notable thing that's happened this week with the the Victory Saber project is it's actually been revealed. Um, well, it's been put on sale for up for pre orders in Japan. All of this time, people in Japan who might might well be almost the almost the core audience for, for a Victory Saber toy, they haven't been able to get on the crowdfund and back this. This week, it went up at Takara Tomy Mall. There's basically this week and uh, uh, this week and the following week to to get to the end of the crowdfunding period. So uh, Japan is now going hammer hammer and tongs at those pre-orders, uh, which might also explain why we sort of we suddenly got to the point where it's it's uh it's at eleven thousand eleven thousand units. So anyway, that's the uh that's the update on Victory Saber. I'm certainly I'm certainly looking forward to it. I I I, 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 I bought, take it you've backed him. 
Oh, I definitely have. I've got I, I got the masterpiece Star Saber. I'm very famously ordered him on the podcast live a few years ago. So, yeah, it's um, there's definitely um, precedent for a Star Saber existing in my collection, um, and I'm I'm very I'm very happy to get this. I also don't actually have that much of a connection to the character. I haven't watched Victory, but it's a cool character. It's a cool it's a cool yeah. bot. So I'm happy to back it. I, I will say. That is the other spanner in the works for me personally, is the fact that a masterpiece already exists. So if I yeah. wind up wanting a nice Star Saber, there is the nicest Star Saber already there. That it being is, said, it is, it this is guy though. does a lot of, a lot of people... have a lot of extra accoutrements with him. He he does. He's I mean he he very much he very much benefits from a being a Star Saber that was announced years after the the masterpiece. The masterpiece Star Saber on the balance. Um, I think I think a lot of people feel like that that missed the mark. It was a bit disappointing. And so we're going to move on to uh, there's a couple more a couple more news stories. First of all, we're going to circle back around to some kingdom uh, kingdom news. Uh, you were you were surprised earlier that we haven't really seen um, Tigertron yet, Max and. Um, here he is. It's, this is one of our first looks at what the, what the figure looks like um, officially with officially with the, the press photos and a picture of its packaging. Yeah. Yeah. And um, surprise, he looks like he looks like the uh, the orange one that we saw earlier, uh, in done in white with uh, actually just as much detail in the uh, the tiger the tiger deco one. I have to say, and with a, a more a more traditional head, the the, the more similar. Um, Similar head that you would expect, given his uh, given his appearance in the, the Netflix series, and uh, so we we've seen a mention today from Kapow Toys, which is a retailer in the UK, that said that they think that this guy is going to be exclusive to Amazon. Now, I don't know if they're just talking about the UK or not, but we have seen two figures. We've seen two deluxes from Wave Four come to market and there's no word of when Tigertron is coming out to market uh, officially for retailers so maybe there's maybe there's something to that maybe Tigertron is just gonna just gonna end up sold on Amazon we, we don't really know yet but uh, I think that I think there's a lot of people who are waiting for this figure Tigertron's a very popular character and so yeah there's there's a lot a lot of people really really wanted to add this guy to their collection there's one last news story that we're going to take a look at which is that this is this is apparently apparently a four x four off off road bumblebee Camaro that's going to be used in the uh, in the new the upcoming Rise of the Beasts film. So like it's it's, a it's not very Michael Bay looking vehicle. It, <laughs> it, it kind it kind of is, isn't it? It's a it is yeah. A, it, yeah. Um, a little bit anxious, not too I anxious, don't... but a little bit. You know what? I don't hate it. Oh, it's but... a, it looks cool. This is no question. It does. It does look cool. there, kinda. But yeah. So <laughs> uh, so look, Bumblebee has already taken two forms in the the cinematic reboot universe. He had the Volkswagen, and he did transform into a Camaro at the end of the Bumblebee movie. So if Bumblebee decides that he likes Camaros, then he can stay with stay with the brand and um, take on a take on a four-wheel drive off-road um, look for Rise of the Beast, as it, as it seems. No idea no idea where this is going to fit in plot-wise, and I'm not really going to go hunting for those spoilers. I, I, like, I, I kind of don't. I kind of don't really need them. No. And, like, th- yeah, I criticised it before, but I'm sort of withholding judgment a lot of this Rise of the Beast stuff because every th- just about everything I've heard about this movie so far does not make me feel very positive yeah but yeah, then was... everything that i heard about the bumblebee movie prior to its release also did not make me feel positive and then you know we started seeing trailers of that movie and it looked incredible and then it came out and it was fantastic so i'm kind of like you know i'll just withhold judgment for time being and yeah that's, see that's seem, that seems fair that seems fair i, I mean look Transformers fans have never been known to withhold judgment of anything until it gets released. Um, so, like, you, you should be complimented on taking that taking that position <laughs> for, the, 
the very first time. Um, I mean, I mean, we've basically just been looking through all the figures reveals for the week and judging them. Um, but yes, like let, let's 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 try this as a novel approach for once. We we might withhold judgment on something. I'm sure it'll be fine. Sort of. Yeah. It'll be a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of all the of all the things that will be, it will definitely be a movie. Yeah. Be a movie. It will have Transformers in it. Um, well, we hope. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, uh, the 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 there is precedent, but yeah, we don't know. We're running close to time, so let's let's start talking about some uh, acquisitions for the week. If you do, want to do you want to bring up your acquisition? I'll, I'll give you the stage. I'll kick us off. Um, so I've got a bit of a weird one. So this is... Um, I forget what's... It's... Uh, from, Dragoon, I think you said. Dra- it's dra- it's the KO of Unique Toys Dragoon, mm. which is their sort of third-party version of The Last Night Megatron. Um, now, this is the KO from... I forget what company they're under now, but this is what was Black Mamba and what was Kubian Bao. So it's those same people again. Um, <laughs> and it, um, you know, I mean, the, the entire market of this stuff is so complicated now. Yeah, it's very... Like, my, my entire knowledge of these things comes from shows you store comment sections. Right? Yeah. It's just... <laughs> it's the only way you can keep track of it. I've... I, I think yeah, I might yeah, have there to There is a little idea what's going on. Oh, they yeah. uh, Recommend it. Um, so this is a figure which I would have picked up the official version of, if not for the fact that this specific version of a KO has a very beautiful battle damage sculpt uh, paint job. It's kind of oh, hard to see yeah. uh, through It is a little bit at the moment, webcam. but yeah. Uh, because it's largely a, it's not really like a um, a scratched up paint job. It's more of a sort of a black wash, uh, which doesn't really translate well onto camera. You can see a bit of it there on the shield a bit more clearly. But it's mm. nice sort of paint fading there, um, and it, it's only really one uh, kind of paint job. You know, there's no um, scratches or anything, no rust. It's all this uh, black wash, sort of dirt and grime. But it's really well applied. Uh, so, what it does is it just brings out <laughs> brings out the detail really beautifully. Uh, yeah, very nice. What is a very nice mold. Um, like for me personally, I adore this design. It is by far for me the be- <laughs> the best design that we wound up getting out of the Michael Bay films. Um, Look, the the, it, the Megatron design from the last night is very well regarded, and it's one of it's one of the few things where people are just like, yeah, no, that that was a really good part of the movie, um, instead of just universally deriding it. Yeah, it's like it's also a design that lends itself really well to an action figure. Like, mm, it, yes, a, transformation yes, notwithstanding, it's you have this really nicely proportioned and detailed Megatron. You know, um, the figure itself comes with. Each of the accessories that you need from the movie. So he has like an alternate faceplate, um, you know, cannon, shield, sword, all really beautifully detailed. And it, it just, the overall proportions of this figure lends itself to being a very natural, uh, just a very natural flowing action figure, right? It's like you yeah. pose this and it feels as natural as if you're posing a figure arts or a figma piece. How, so how it's kind of hard to describe. It? It's quite it's quite large there. Yeah, so this is about ten inches tall. Um, so it's this knockoff version is a bit is smaller than the actual official Unique Toys version, mm-hmm. but it's larger than any of my official Unique Toys figures, uh, like including you know the Optimus and any of that. Yeah. Um, the big thing here that might be an issue for people is. Like, for me, it certainly was an issue. First getting it out of the package was the transformation. The instructions are awful. They're just awful. I'm going ha- uh, to have, and- have, have a shot at this uh, when, when it comes to my turn as well. So, yeah. Yeah, it, it, they're awful. And video instructions, I, I've, I watched a few. None of them really commu- uh, able to communicate properly how to do, transform this thing. 
you sort of just have to play it by ear and work with what you got. Because once you... Transform the... Oh, okay. No, I was yeah. going to say... Or maybe I cut out. Yeah. Yeah, you, you actually did. You, you said once you... And it seemed like you were thinking about things for a while. And then it just crossed that threshold it was all, where it was obvious you dropped out instead of were thinking. That, that crossed that threshold of Adelaide Internet. Yeah. So... I think um, we're good now. What it is, is it's... You transform, you transform it once and it feels kind of unintuitive, very complicated. But you start doing it more and it's it's... It's just a very well-designed piece. It, there's no one sort of thing which I can point to and say, you know, this is what makes it a well-designed transformer. But once you've done this process a couple of times back and forth, it just flows beautifully. Yeah. It's it's that classic unique toys thing of everything is compartmentalized. So, you know, like the lower legs are incredibly complicated, but you do that complicated section in one chunk, you transform them and it's done. Mm-hmm. And then you transform the torso and it's done. You transform the arms and they're done. And it's, you know, you're not spinning pieces around, you know, trying to move everything in complicated directions. It's very clearly defined where everything's going to go. And what it is, is it's not a bunch of complicated motions with no clear purpose. Or it's not, you know, a bunch of complicated motions with one or two standout moments. Like, you know when you have most masterpiece figures um, and you, you have a standout moment, like when, you know, MP Bumblebee, the first version, the chest sucks up or, yep. uh, you know, the arms coming together on MP Megatron, right? It's that in, sort of in, thing. Inferno's ladder. Yeah, that sort of stuff. Mm. Whereas this figure is like, I, I can't point you to one specific moment because it is a dozen of those moments all linked together really beautifully. It's... I feel I, I feel I feel like you're selling this you're selling this um, product to me on the um, basis that I'm going to have a rel- religious experience when I when I transform it. <laughs> Maybe I'm overselling it, but it is quite good. <laughs> um, the only caveat I would say is the only caveat I would say is that uh, the KO version, which I bought because of the paint job, uh, it is not as good as an official Unique Toys figure. Uh, the plastic, the, the quality just isn't there. Um, uh, it's not poor quality plastic. It's not a poor build quality, but it, it's certainly not up to the official par. Just not the not the usual standard. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. And so while and then it's also not the most poseable figure in the world, but it is the most poseable of any unique toys figures so far uh, from this hmm. movie line. So I would say if if you like this design, this is well well worth picking up. Um, I, I'm very happy with it. It's not perfect, but it's bloody good. That's that. That's a. I mean, that's a pretty glowing endorsement right there. It is. It's a pretty good figure. <laughs> so where where did where did you get him from? Was it was it Showsy store? Showsy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice. Well, so um, I have um, I have a Megatron as well to show off this week. Um. A little bit, um, a little bit of a different Megatron, but also, if you if you're familiar with the things that I like in my collection, completely consistent with what you might come to expect, and that is uh, this guy. Hello, he, gorgeous. He is the um, when am I? When am I going to say? There he is. He is the Transformers Cloud. So this was um, Cloud Megatron. So this was the uh, the e hobby set from I think around 2013, 2013, 2014. Um, this mold has been used to create a G two Megatron um, and also a Bludgeon. Uh, so it's it's no it's no stranger to uh, it's no stranger to Megatron, and it also then makes sort of makes sense as to why it's got swords instead of uh, instead of having Megatron's signature arm cannon. The interesting thing with this, as you can sort of see as I'm holding it up and it's it's shaking, the swords are rubber. Um, they 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 do sort of shake around a little bit, um, but that's that's fine. So this the sword actually goes into into the 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 uh, the tank uh, the, the the tank top, but um, I wanted to leave it in his in his hand. Uh, and then he has the uh, he has the the smaller. Uh, that's not a knife. This is a knife version as well. Very very nice. I, it's it's my it is my third. Transformers Cloud figure. I also have Cloud Rodimus, which is something that I like to 
break out on occasion because I really like that figure. And I do have Cloud Optimus uh, as well. And the Cloud Optimus is um, Cloud Optimus is a repaint of um, a repaint of one of the um, uh, one of the classics Optimus molds in uh, some slightly different colors, some slightly different, slightly cooler colors. So along with that, along with the along with the third Cloud figure that I've ever I've ever owned, came the fourth Cloud figure that I've ever owned, and probably probably the last one I'm really looking to get. And it's it's this guy, which is he is Brawn. Uh, he's very clearly, if you're if you're familiar with the the line, he's very clearly a repaint of Transformers Prime Bulkhead. Um, but goodness me, the the colors on this guy, the colors just really work on him with the 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 sort of the signature green and orange that you get with Brawn. And he has a he has a, a new face sculpt uh, as as well. Um, that is really beautiful. Really nice. Oh yeah, like he's he's just really nice. Like the light, the light, you know, sort of reflects off him at just the right angles. There's just the right amount of paint on things. Just a really, really nice figure. And I did I did mention that I was going to have a whinge about um, about instructions. So I would like to point out that um, Braun comes packaged in vehicle mode, and he comes with instructions that tell you how to turn him into the vehicle mode from robot mode classic yeah, yeah I, I know right it's a yeah, classic it's, um it, it's worse if it's the other way around because at least vehicle mode it sort of flows a bit more naturally to get out of it because you're sort of breaking things this is, apart this is true this is true but even so uh. now I, it has been it has been it's been a couple of weeks since we did an episode and so i get confused between what i've shown off on the the tcca wednesday night video chats on games nights we, we have a lot of activities that go on in the group however i am fairly certain that i have not shown this guy off on the podcast yet so i'm gonna do it now um this is one of my other one of my other recent acquisitions which i'm very very happy about which is the uh transformers animated wing blade optimus prime figure he is uh, it's a lovely piece. ultimately that's for he, Japanese at one, yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, he is ultimately just a, some bits of armor around the regular Transformers animated Voyager. But holy shit, it all it all hangs together just so nicely. I mean, it's a testament to how it's a testament to the strength of the animated line. Anyway, um, I think it's also probably safe to say he's not just a Japanese design. Like this guy was going to be released. This guy was going to be released in the West, but the the line finished up, and so it was just sort of a, funny that Takara ended up releasing it, and it became so popular based on that release. He is the he is the Voyager Prime, uh, and he is actually slightly transparent, and um, that is a that is an, enough for some people to actually regard it with some suspicion and and, uh, and uh, think that it's going to break. It is extremely solid. Um, he's he's a transparent figure that does not appear to have any breakage issues. All of the extra pieces are just armor that clip onto him. So um, if you if I hold that up again, there you can sort of just see the the um, the wings just sort of like sit uh, sit around on on his back. And you can also see actually from that from that angle, um, and even because I just pulled it off, like you can see Prime's regular hand. Uh, Prime's regular hand is there, and then the 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 sort of the the, the bigger muscly hand that sort of indicates he's powered up. It actually just sits over the um, over the existing arm and just has plug a, into his peg. Yeah, yeah, it just has it has a, a, a peg that um, plugs into his hand and sits over his arm, and um, and yeah, so that's 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 how they they attach. They're essentially gloves. They're just they're just cool they're just cool power gloves, um, and the um, the guns here do actually shoot as well. Of course, so be careful be careful about that. Don't have, don't have anyone's eye out. Besides that, regular Voyager Optimus Prime. Very, very happy to have him in my collection. Um, I did have an opportunity to buy him a couple of years ago when I was um, I was passing through Singapore, but instead I purchased the Elite Guard version of Optimus Prime. So I came away from that shop with a Transformers animated Prime, regardless. Um, but uh, yeah, now I'm 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 happy to have gone back and uh, collect collected the other one as well. That is about it for um, for acquisitions and for news thing, things that have happened this week. Um, yeah, um, 
I don't think we've missed anything out. Do you, did you have anything that you anything else you wanted to talk about? I think we're pretty well covered all the bases. I think I think we I think we pretty much have covered all of all of the bases that uh, that need to be covered. Um, a little bit of club news. Um, we are very happy to announce that we've. Uh, we're, I'm not sure if we've actually made 200 members. I think we are. We are at just over 200 members. So we are going to. We're going to do a little bit of a, a, a giveaway. We 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 do occasionally like to reward people for signing up to the club. So we are going to do a, a giveaway. Uh, it's going to be sometime in the next uh, sometime in the next few days. Um, so yeah, uh, any anyone who is a paid up member of the of uh, TCCA will be eligible for the draw, and you will see your name on screen, and one lucky member will actually come away with a prize. We also um, we started we started off our fundraising activities in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we we have given away a buzzworthy Bum- Bumblebee Worlds Collide set. Try saying that ten times fast. Uh, <laughs> Very successful. We sold eighty tickets for the for the fundraiser. Um, we've so we've been we've been able to donate about forty dollars to the Royal Children's Hospital. We've put some money into the into the club's coffers to pay for our uh, attendance at Supernova and things like that. Um, so yeah, very very happy. And we've also managed to give away a, a very sought after set to to one lucky person as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's the brief roundup of uh, of club activities. And so. Without with with all of that done, um, it is time to bid farewell. Thank you for listening, everyone. Um, if you've been watching along with the live record, thank you very much for checking us out. Um, you can find out more about these stories. You'll find, you'll find links to all the stories and more in the show notes. Um, you can get in touch with us. We love we love hearing feedback. Um, you can find find the, the podcast website at transformersweekly.podbean.com. Um, you can find us on Facebook at Australian Transformers Weekly, and you can find Max and myself in Transformers Collectors Club Australia on Facebook. And if you're not already subscribed and you're just listening to this in like a Google search result or something like that, you will find uh, the information necessary to subscribe on the website. Um, or you can just search for Australian Transformers Weekly and your podcatcher of choice and distinction. They're, they're all out there and they're all, we're all indexed in them. Uh, the podcast is a production of Transformers Collectors Club Australia. It's a registered club run in Victoria, run by, uh, run by volunteers donating their time. Effort, energy, money, and Friday nights like this to make make Transformers uh, collecting in Australia better and more fun for everyone. We do love the community that we've built. Our goal is to connect Transformers fans around the country, and um, to do that, we like to engage the community. And you can find out more about the benefits of TCCA membership and how to show your support for what we do at TransformersCCA.com. And with that, that's all from us. Um, we will be back with more Transformers news soon, hopefully next week, but, um, we'll see. Sometimes, sometimes it's a bit hard to get things going on a weekly basis when there's, uh, there's lockdowns and all sorts of things getting in the way, but, uh, yeah. Uh, but we have to there. imagine that the, you know, big dump of end of year, end of year news will be coming sooner rather than later. <sighs> Okay. I mean, I mean, I I feel like we kind of had that this week, but there's gonna there's gonna be more. There's a new um, line next year. We have to is, imagine it'll get revealed soon, right? So, well, you'd, you'd hope so. I mean, look, I, I think <laughs> I think that's gonna I think that's gonna come for PulseCon. Um, so I I think sometime later this month. We are now in October. PulseCon is in about two or three weeks. So hopefully that will be where we uh, start to see the the new Transformers line revealed. I'm not actually sure that it's gonna make it out sort of for the end of the year and start of next year because the Kingdom Golden Disc figures are still coming in March and I think there's still some Kingdom figures that need to get released. So, oh, yeah, I that's... don't know. Well, plenty of it hasn't hit shelves at all, like Tigertron, which we've known about for forever. Yeah, ti- Tigertron, Pipes, out. Slammer. Um, there might be another wave of Kingdom or maybe, maybe all the remaining figures have gone into the Golden Disc collections. So, um, we'll see. Anyway... That is about it. Thank you for listening, everyone, and thank you for watching, and uh, especially people who've been watching along in the on the, the live stream and making comments. So, um, we we do appreciate everyone's uh, t- everyone taking the time to watch. Thank you very much. That is all from us, and we'll be back with more Transformers news in the fullness of time. Mm-hmm.